Okay, so I was asked to make a simple 2D maze game. They said that they'd like the game to be for mobile devices, so let's address that first. The great thing about Unity is you basically design once and then you have the build be for whatever uh, the target device is. So in File, if you go to Build Settings, this is really what's key to making the um, game compatible with a certain uh, operating system. So by default, we have it set here to PC, Mac, and Linux. But here's iOS, here's Android. It's just a matter of clicking on that and then uh, uh, selecting that as what you want. So, as, so as far as being a, a mobile device, that's really all there is to it. Uh, it is the selecting of which one you want there. You might have to make certain tweaks for uh, the actual control. Unfortunately, I really can't do any testing of swipe left, swipe right, that kind of thing. Um, reason for that is because I don't have a touch monitor. So even if I put the code in, I really can't troubleshoot it. I can't really debug it. I'd have to know for a fact that it works from memory. So anyways, the uh, basics of a maze game is really simple. You've got two options. You can either draw your maze externally drag and drop the image into your asset folder and then what you do is you just have to add a bunch of what are known as collider boxes uh, one for each wall basically to keep your character from being able to walk through walls so in that one you're uh, drawing the image externally but doing all you know the colliders take a lot of work now the alternative way is that you can instead of drawing the picture externally you can make a bunch of wall prefabs each with a collider box and then you just assemble it here uh, so uh, you know there's pros and cons to both versions um, either one you'll have a whole lot of little objects so it's either a single maze image with you know dozens and dozens of collider boxes or you've got uh, dozens and dozens of walls each with their own collider box so six one way one half dozen the other we're gonna go with the simple uh, image drawn externally now I did make a few changes to this uh, I drew I drew the image and I realized it wasn't quite large enough so when you click on the image asset if you change the pixels per unit because this is a ratio if you make this number smaller the image actually gets bigger that was really the main thing that I did there I also uh, compressed it that way it reduced the memory uh, this was taking up something like 12 or 14 megabytes. Now it's down to just under 5. And that's the other thing. If you have a bunch of standalone wall images, uh, probably it's less memory that way. And the other image is just the player. So let's take our maze. We drag and drop it. And what we want to do is we want to center this because it is not. The image... By default, the image should show up at the zero, zero point, which by default is the center of the screen. However, uh, as I drew this, I drew more stuff to the right of the image and so wound up uh, the origin of or what I wanted to be the origin wasn't actually the center of the image anymore. Okay, so now let's drag and drop our little player and put them in there too. So they both need colliders. So for her, we're going to add component, physics 2D, and we're going to choose polygon collider. That way it's form fitting. Next for maze, what you'd have to do here is for every single wall, you need a collider box. Now, like this one straight across, you could use a single collider for that. You know, single collider here, but still you're going to have a couple dozen colliders. So I'm just zooming out so you can see what the maze looks like. And again, the intention of, of this was really for uh, uh, maybe a toddler, someone who's younger, um, something to um, uh, keep them uh, entertained. Now, let's see. We're going to... Let's add a couple colliders just so we get to get the idea. So we've got the maze object uh, highlighted. We're going to click on Add Component, Physics 2D. 
and we're going to add box glider 2D. Now, right by default, it's the size of the image, so you can't see the borders that have to scroll out again. So what we're going to do is we're just going to shrink this in, and eventually you'll see it. Shrink the size. And there's the green lines. Probably can see them now. Okay. Now we're just going to manually edit because now we can get access to the green dots to manually shift this around. Okay. Now we're going to add another one. Physics 2D. Box Glider 2D, and again we shrink it. Now we can manually move it. And colliders colliding with each other on the same object do not matter. So the maze object now has multiple colliders so even if there's a collision it's not a problem i mean if you're really really uh picky about it then yeah you can like tweak it so they don't collide but it really shouldn't cause uh an issue and you just keep doing that rinse and repeat so nothing really to look at it yet but now let's start adding some functionality. So we're going to right click, we're going to choose create, and we're going to choose C sharp script, and we're going to call this move maze. So what we're going to do is the character will always be center of the screen. They technically won't move. What's going to move is the entire maze. So for the maze to move, it needs a rigid body. That allows for the application of, of uh, physics. It's 2D, so not a whole lot of physics. It's really just velocity in this case. So click on Maze, Add Component, Physics 2D, Rigid Body, Gravity Scale 0. We don't need gravity. And okay, now we're going to go into that script. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here. So public transform hero obj. Now what a transform variable does, it lets you refer to another object in the scene or if we had them, a prefab down here. Reason for that is even though these objects are in the same scene, they don't technically know about each other for want of a better term. So by adding a transform variable, I can make the maze be aware of the hero. So if we click on the maze object and we go down to the script, well, I think I put the, oh, I don't think I put the script on yet. Sorry about that. So I created the script. I just didn't attach it. To attach it, just drag and drop it. There it is. And there's the hero obj, hero object transform. So you just take the player drag and drop and there they are what that's going to allow me to do is so the maze object is now aware of the player object so with a script that is attached to the mage object i can therefore change the hero object so this script is attached to the maze this script refers to the hero so this same script will let me make changes to both the hero and the maze Okay, um, that's about the most obtuse thing in this uh, particular lesson. So now let's actually start moving the maze around. Now, typically, I would put in key code variables. So it's a public key code and then the name of uh, the variable. Since it's a simple game, we're just going to take a shortcut. We're going to put the actual name of the key right in here. So if. Input dot get key. Now there's three versions of this. There's get key, get key down, and get key up. The difference is get key is true every single frame that the key is pressed down. 
get key down is only true for the single frame that you press the key. In other words, like a one and done. You hit a button and you shoot something off and that's it. Get key up, you let go of the button, and again, a one-off. Like maybe it's a charge move. You charge for two seconds, you let go of the button, and it fires off. So get key down, get key up are both one-offs. They're only true for one frame. Whereas get key is true as long as that key is still being pressed. So what key? Well, we'll use the typical WASD. And we want, oops, sorry about that. And we want something to happen. So if the key is pressed, what do we want to happen? Well, since the character isn't actually going to move, so if W is being used for up, then to make it look like the character is moving up, the map actually has to move down. So it seems a little counterintuitive, but it'll work. All right, so how do we make the map move down? Well, we added a component. We added rigid body. Well, rigid body 2D. It's important that you use the right terminology. So get component. It is the rigid body 2D component. It is velocity. And it's a new vector too, since this is a 2D environment. They're not moving horizontally. They're going to move vertically. But we want it to move down so it makes it look the player is moving up. Now we'll save this and we'll actually be able to run this already. Now watch what happens. I'm going to press the W key. Okay, so you got a few things happening. They did hit the wall, but then everything started rotating. The reason for that is, again, rigid body allows for physics. So you have to constrain the, uh, the rotation of the object, in this case, the maze. So you're going to put a check for, I think it's just Z is all we need to freeze. Let's run that again and see. Yeah, that's fine. So we froze Z. And even though I'm, I'm tapping and holding down the W key, you can see they're not moving because of the collision. So already you've got like 90% of the functionality of this game. You, you now know how to make a wall that is solid uh, by adding a collider to the wall, a collider to the character. You now know how to move the maze in a certain direction. So let's build that out a little bit more. Now, here's the thing. If I let go of this key, even though this is not true, this has not been changed. So if I hit a wall, I stop. If I don't hit a wall, I'm going to keep on going. So if you don't want that to happen, then here's what we're going to do. We're going to type in else. So in other words, check to see if this is true. If not, then go on to the next. And in the next, and you don't really have to, the way I'm lining this up, while you do need this, you do need this, and this needs to be in between them, you really don't have to line this up as neatly as I do. I'm just trying to make it easier to read. So I think we really need to change is we're going to move down, so that would be the S key, and we need this the map to move up. Now, we haven't put any um, collider boxes here, so they're going to just walk right through that. So I'm going to press S, and they're going to just keep walking. Now, if I press W, they're going to turn around. And again, I tapped, and it's still going. So, we're getting close. And again, another else. So these are all cascading, for want of a better term. They're all nested, I think might be the better term. Uh, but in other words, it's definitely doing a check of one before the other. Now for this one, we're going to check for the letter A. And I believe, so if we want to make it look like they're going to the left, then we want them, the maze, to be moving to the right. So let's test that. Yes. Which just leaves. And 
this last key will be D and it'll be negative 3 and we're going to do one more We don't want the whole thing. We can get rid of the if. Okay, so this is how you keep it keep it from moving perpetually. So you're, we're going to go through the logic one last time. If the W key is pressed, apply this. Else, okay, well, is the S key pressed? Then apply this. Well, if not else is the A key pressed, then apply this. Else, if the D key is pressed, then apply this. Else, in other words, if none of these keys are pressed, then bring it to a halt. So effectively what this does is this says if you've let go of all the keys, then bring it to a stop. See, as soon as I let go of that key, it comes to a halt. Again, you're, you're, we're really close to having this game, as far as functionally complete, um, now it's just a matter of you know adding the rest of the collider boxes. Okay? So there's two more things left. One, when you find the exit, you need it to say, okay, you won and go on to the next maze. And two, we want the character to rotate around. Rotation is handled, handled using what's known as a Euler angle. So, as I said earlier, we created this so we can make changes to it. So, hero object dot, we'll just do transform dot Euler angles equals new vector 3, because it's actually, so even though you're a 2D environment, the rotation is happening on the Z axis. So, 0, Zero, zero. Your angle is an absolute angle. In other words, you, you're saying rotate it to this exact angle, ignore whatever it's at, and just put it at this exact arrow. In other words, uh, face 12 o'clock. It's not relative, it's an absolute. Absolutely face 12 o'clock. Likewise, if you're moving downwards, put this at 180. If you're moving left, I think this is 90. It's not a big deal. It's easy to fix if it's actually meant to be negative. You'll see. Here. Try negative 90. And we do not need to put one here because this is just stopping your movement. So you don't really have to change what direction you're fa facing if you're stopping. If you want to, so be it. But don't have to. All right, let's run it now. And there you go, they rotate. Euler angle is a really great, powerful statement. It's the kind of functionality that's been around in games for a long time because it saves on um, effort because you don't have to redraw the character, and it saves on memory because you don't need a new image. So, um, you know, again, obviously the collider boxes are not here, so they can walk through the wall. Um, there's uh, one thing to note about this character. They're not quite centered. So if you notice, this arm is almost against the wall. This arm is not. That's because the character is not actually centered. So if you're curious why, that's why. Um, this was actually modified. They were like holding a scythe. And so with the scythe, then the character as a whole was centered. Without the scythe, they're not. So, um, that should about do it. Um, oh yeah, for the uh, exit. I'm just going to put the exit here. So, game object, create empty. We'll call it exit. For the exit, we'll just give it a collider box. Add physics 2d box collider and there's the green square and what we're going to do is we're going to create one more script 
we're going to call this exit control. Click on exit. Put exit control on there. Open this up. And I got to make one change for, well, yeah, one change. For exit, for the collider, this needs to be a trigger. Okay. And the exit needs to be a child of the maze. Because what's happening is the exit is a fixed location. So as the maze moves, the exit needs to move with it. Okay. So what we need to do, all right, so we set the exit to a trigger. And now what we do is this is why it has to be a trigger, because we're going to use a statement that very explicitly refers to a trigger. So void on trigger enter 2D collider 2D other. All right, so this is a routine. Just like start, just like update, it's a predefined routine. It is case sensitive, so it has to be capital O, T, E, D, C, D, or else it won't work. So this is, as it's saying, if you're colliding with a 2D trigger, and other is going to represent the object you're colliding with, we want something to happen. So if other, oops, if other dot name equals Shin, that's the name of the object. Short for Shinigami because it was originally from a uh, another game I was working on. So this script is going to be attached to the exit. If there's a trigger with a 2D object, and that 2D object's name is Shin, sorry, got to be a double equal sign. So if the collision is with a 2D object named Shin, we want something to happen. For now, we'll just say debug.log uh you win you're awesome and actually it's it's really advisable before you go too far whenever you add a new collider like this a new collision always check the debug, debug log because there's so many ways for this to go wrong like if you accidentally make you know it's case sensitive so you might miss a letter okay or if you did um i don't know there's a bunch of things that you could do wrong so before you get really in depth with the functionality check it first okay so now exit is going to exit does have the script so i think this will work now so let's run it i'm going to move around a little bit and then we're just going to travel down and see if it says down here. There we go. You won. You're awesome. So uh, that's it. That's really the functionality. Now, you would move this to the exit. So for this particular maze, the exit is meant to be over here. So what you would do is... Now, physically moving the exit on the map does not change this parent-child linkage. Likewise, um, moving uh, the maze around doesn't change the fact that the maze is aware of this image, uh, this object. So this is actually a good example where there's an awareness here, so to speak, based on parent-child, and there's awareness between this and this object based on the uh, transform variable. So that was kind of quick. I mean, it was a fairly simple request, but that's about it. If you want me to build it out more, I can. But really, at this point, it, it gets really just rinse and repeat. You're just adding more and more uh, collider boxes, each for a wall. Now, if one of you does this all the way out and it turns out there's a limitation, like maybe you can only have 10 collider boxes or something, let me know and I'll give you an alternative. But to the best of my knowledge, you can just keep adding collider boxes to make this work. So that should about do it.